Hey there. Today we're going to be talking about hiding your data by poisoning it to any of the Silicon Valley companies that you still use. As we advocate for on this channel and on many other channels that are similar to mine, you should avoid as much as possible giving any of your data or downloading any app from Silicon Valley companies or other companies such as Microsoft. Unfortunately, while that ideal is ideal, it's not always all that practical. And I'll give an example. Many people and many employers expect you to have something like a LinkedIn profile, and you may need to install LinkedIn. Well, Microsoft, when you install that app on your phone, is going to want access to your contacts. Years ago, I deleted Facebook from my phone when it demanded access to read my SMS messages. That was the complete breaking point. I believe that was back in about 2016. Some of you may have noticed I still do have a Facebook account that has gone inactive. I didn't really see any reason to delete it since Facebook tracks those relationship maps whether you want them to or not. Eventually, I do plan on deleting it. What I have right here is a Motorola G7 Power. And I really like the Motorola Power series. And the reason is, is because they have 5,000 milliamp hour battery life. This phone is supposed to be unlocked, so I will be attempting to de-Google it as long as it was properly advertised. That should be possible. And the reason I got this phone was because one of you contacted me offline and said that you wanted a phone that would essentially be some kind of a burner. So that's what we're going to be using for our sample here today. And the reason why this is a great phone for this functionality of going through and loading in fake contacts is because the Motorola G7 and G8 series use octa-core processors. So this is a relatively fast phone for the $110 that I paid for it. It's probably a little bit oily, but the only thing that was wrong with this device is there is a scratch, and we'll see if I can show you right there. Otherwise, this phone looked like it was brand new out of the box. It still had Android 9 on it when it arrived. I'm just finishing up some system updates right now, which you can probably see that will be necessary for a de-googling video. And the app that I will be using for data hiding and throwing up a smoke screen is Fake Contacts. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch over and start screen recording on this device to give you a little view of the F-Droid store. This phone is running full regular Android, which means that Google is collecting who knows what kind of data off of us for everything that we're doing, but F-Droid will still install on a standard Android device. Just to show you really quick on this recording, the F-Droid store is really cool. Most of the apps on here are open source. There's a handful of them that do track data or promote non-free services. There are instances where you might have an open source app, but in order to access the network, they may need to give certain information to those different companies that you're accessing. So for those apps, you will see something, usually it'll say something along the lines of this app promotes non-free services. It'll give you a little warning. I really like Feeder. I haven't been able to find a good RSS feed app in the standard Google store, but Feeder is awesome and it's lightweight. But since we're focusing on hiding our contacts, I'm going to pull up an app here that is called Fake Contacts. This is a really cool app and we will open it up and I'll show you basically how it works. The creator of this app 
loaded in a bunch of fake names and they loaded in a process for including a phone number. Obviously, it looks like this information is not accurate. There are certain area codes in the world where there's no numbers issued to it. 213 is probably a phone number that is not actually issued and the obvious reason why this person would have created the app this way is because they don't want to be liable for loading bad people's information into the network. There could be some kind of legal liability involved with it, but basically what this is, is it's uh, 213, which is really supposed to be 123, 4567, and then a bunch of random numbers. All of these N items at the end of the phone number means it will select a random number to put in that place. I can't recommend any standard area code for you to use for the same reason why the creator of this app probably did not include a real area code, I'm assuming. And that is because there was that 1980s song that had you calling Jenny from a bathroom stall phone number. Most of you probably actually know that song, but it put that band under quite a bit of scrutiny for a while, and the person whose phone number it was was rather upset with them. For the email address at the bottom, you have first name, last name at, exam at example.com. My recommendation would be to use example.com. Definitely don't use anything like Gmail because I'll have an issue if I recommend anything else because we don't want to start putting people on lists for spam from Facebook whenever they get hacked again. Of course, these names at the top, they're very uncommon names. Oh, and the phone is asking me to restart. These names are uncommon, and the reason for this is so that there's no collisions, basically so you don't get duplicate contacts. Personally, what I would do for this is load in names for the most common last names and the most common first names, because that will ensure that it the, name, the names look like they're real people when you connect to, to something like Facebook and they download all of your contacts onto their servers because it's gonna make your relationship map look more real. Most likely when Facebook sees any of these names, so if they see Zoe Zen in your phone book, they're going to know that it's junk data. Most of their engineers will probably be familiar with this or at some point they will become familiar with this and will run into a situation where they start to correct the machine learning algorithm. Because those engineers have to program for very common scenarios though, they may not really be able to grasp that you are loading in fake contacts for a fake relationship map. So Facebook creates the shadow profile. So anyone who uses a Facebook app their information gets loaded from their phone book into Facebook. One of you actually pointed out that this is a serious issue because Google and Facebook can gather certain information about us without our permission because other people give them permission to access their phone books, which means other people give consent on our behalf, which is a major problem with all of these Silicon Valley companies. So in some cases, it might make sense to have a Facebook page or to have a Google account just to feed them misinformation or generate normie traffic so that you look like anyone else. Rob Braxman also speaks to this point. I know certain people that will go onto Facebook and they will take quizzes and answer all of the questions in such a way that does not match their actual personality profile just to throw off the algorithm to make it more difficult for Facebook to know who they are. 
What's really cool about this app though is once you have this list, once you have these phone numbers, you can actually create these fake contacts in just a moment. So all I have to do is hit create fake contacts and allow the app access to my phone book. And then when I go to my contacts list, these will be in the bottom. I'm gonna cut out the portion where it shows my real contacts. I've culled my contacts list on this device down to the bare minimum. So the people who are on here are people that Facebook and Google absolutely know for a fact that I'm connected to because they're not people that I would cut ties to. For example, my parents. I'm not gonna delete my parents from my phone book. Google and Facebook probably have me well enough profiled to know that we'll never have that situation. And Facebook is on this phone. Eventually I'll probably poison my Facebook data as well. I just have that on there because this phone came with it pre-installed. All right, so now we are back down to the Z's and we can see Zach Zabinski, Zach Zaragoza, Zach Zen, Zach Zimmerman, and it just goes down the entire list of various people all in the Z's so that they're very easy to delete, to delete if the app stops working. You know exactly where to find them all. They are all right down at the bottom of your list. To remove these contacts is extremely straightforward. All you do is you go back over to fake contacts, wherever that app is found on your phone. And then when you click delete fake contacts, it will remove all of those contacts from your list. I'm just going to double check here and cut that part out of this video because I don't want to show you all of my contacts. So relatively straightforward, it's a good way to poison your data so that if you are forced to use an Android device because you don't know how to de-Google or you can't afford a de-Googled phone at this particular point in time or you need to use an app like LinkedIn, you can actually hide your information from the big tech companies and ensure that your data is protected. Obviously the best way to do this, which I won't endorse, is to go in and find people in your local area using some kind of white pages, if you can find a phone book that's still around, and pretend like you're connected to those people. You may even want to attempt to befriend them on Facebook if you can find them, so that you can generate an entire fake social network around yourself to really mask things from big tech. Short of doing that though, this fake contacts app is pretty handy and it's a good way to hide who you actually are in cases where you do need to use certain tools to function like a normal person. As always though, and I, many other people have recommended this, Rob Braxman recommends it, Mental Outlaw recommends it, I'm sure the hated one also. You should definitely give the F-Droid store a look and see what kind of tools are in there for you. Really with any of those apps, if you're thinking of an app like a tool, so say a calculator is a tool, it's not designed to affect your dopamine at all, the F-Droid store is a great place to get things like calculators. There's other things in there like there's a check splitter so that if you and your friends are going out and gathering supplies for say a cabin trip or if you're going and you're having a potluck and you want to split the expenses, there is a tool in there for that type of thing. The Afteroid store is amazing for anything that you would use as a tool and are not looking to find a way to waste time or get addicted. There's also other ways you can connect certain unsupported repositories there. I'm not going to go over that, but there are a lot more tools that are available and 
I can't endorse the F-Droid store enough. So again, thanks for stopping by. This is Nick, signing out.